Good morning to everybody and welcome to the Zurich University Hospital. I'm briefly going to introduce yourself, the clinical presentation of the patient that we are going to treat. It's a 69-year-old patient with severe functional regurgitation in presence of LV function, severely depressed, 29%. As you can see, it's a patient severely symptomatic for dyspnea near functional class three to four, presenting with a moderate to high uh, predicted surgical risk. Preoperative echocardiography showed a severe mitral regurgitation, mainly based on alunar dilatation. And coronary angiogram showed the absence of significant coronary artery disease in presence of a huge dominant left system. As usual, we did the preprocedural planning based on CT scan. Here you can see the measurement of the mitral annulus. And based on CT scan, we are also pretty confident that the risk of uh, hit the circumflex artery is not so high because as you can see, there is uh, enough space between the annular planus and the artery. Anyway, we are going to put a guide wire in the circumflex artery in order to use it as a reference. So welcome to the uh, hybrid uh, operating room in our institution. I'm here with uh, Dr. Taramasso. You already saw him before presenting the case. He was very fast in scrubbing. And I'm with Oliver Gamperly, which is uh, assisting us uh, uh, for most of the procedure. Uh, we need, uh, as usual, a, a team effort. In this particular case, as you have seen in the CT scan, there is a potential risk for the circumflex artery. So we need to be prepared and actually we prepared uh, everything for a potential bailout situation. As standard practice for cardio band, we start with two accesses. One is a vein access as usual in the in a, in a groin, femoral vein, and there will be also a arterial access. So this step will be pre-closure with ProGlide. Pre-closure in the venous side is a little bit uh, tricky because you don't see really the backflow, but if you do it slowly, you can see it. For the transeptal puncture, we already have uh, an idea according to CT scan where to do it. We have a target in the mid fossa with anterior aim. I'm using an SL0 cater. We give now 2000 heparin. And as usual, this will be echo guided. We will start uh, with a bicaval by caval view and this is a good time to introduce uh, the other important operator on the table we have uh, professor zuber who is uh, helping us during this procedure so this is the by caval view which we need to start as with uh, any mitral interventions i get tenting already in the superior vena cava now trying to get uh, I'm now in the superior limb, I'm getting now in the fossa. I want to be a bit more anterior. Pull back. I don't have a, I don't have a tremendous uh, contact. This is a bit better, but very posterior now. I'm not happy, so I will, I will, go, I will go up again and try a different location. Yeah, it was too posterior. So it's a bit, the, the septum is a bit bulging, so there is no way to really get back in position until you, you do the procedure from, from scratch. So second, second attempt. Yeah, we are through the septum for sure. Now I put a wire, so that shows uh, exactly where we are. Here we see the wire is a bit higher there. I think it should be acceptable. So the transeptal position is okay. We can advance the wire in a pulmonary vein. This was a trick to identify, to visualize better. location and then over the wire we advance this uh, cater nicely in the pulmonary vein. Put a super stiff 
wire in the Puma vein. By turning the knob, we can bend the tip of this transceptor sheath. You can see here, bending, make it straight now. Good. So this is similar to the mitre clip device, but with a little bit more stability. It is obviously nicely hydrophilic, so that we don't need much pre-dilatation at the groin. The device is nicely advanced without any friction. We can make a bit of bending here. We work in LEO and we advance it through the septum. I'm pulling back the nose cone that we get the image, which is uh, helping us to identify the position. And we have a few centimeters of the cadre in the left atrium. Now I hold this uh, cadre in position. We keep a little bit bending so it will be more stable. And now we pull back the wire inside of the cadre and we remove the whole thing back, aspirating from the, from the syringe. Yes. So we position this uh, stand. So this stand has, uh, has a locking system. We can move this clockwise and counterclockwise. This will bring us posterior and high, anterior and low to the, to the annulus. You can regulate the friction by activating this knob. So what we do now is we go REO. We take a picture of the apex and we bend the cather so that it looks in towards the apex. Using echo, I try to position the tip of the cather in the middle of the, of the mitral valve, like this. On this view, you see on floral, we are facing the apex and on the echo as well, the tip of the guide cather is facing the middle of the mitral valve. Excellent. So the next step, we have to put this, uh, in this particular case, we will put the guide cather in the left uh, main, in the left circumflex artery, because of uh, the specific anatomy. In this particular case, we have to leave a wire in the circ because the circumflex is super dominant, the left coronary is super dominant. Good, this will be enough. Okay, so this will be just done in this particular case. Advancement of the cadre into the ventricles. So in this view, we need to be in the middle of the valve, like this. The wire gets now into the ventricle. And now as we advance, I need to release the curve. So we are now almost ready to engage. Okay, this is the procedure of advancing the wire. Now the wire fits into the anterolateral commissure quite by, by default. We pull back the spool. We'll uh, remove this uh, locking system. And we can now advance partially the delivery system. We advance a bit the implant catheter and we bend the GC so that we go towards the annulus. And as you see, we are now in the direction of the anterolateral commissure with uh, fine maneuvers, we can get into the annulus in this region. It is very important at this time to mobilize the spool 
so that we identify clearly what is the implant cater and what is the spool. So I am moving the spool. We can see this also on, on Floro. I'm moving the spool back and forth. So we know where is the implant cater. The implant cater is, uh, I would say, a few millimeters away from the inch. It is in a curve which is, uh, uh, the angle is about 45 degrees to the annulus. And the circumflex artery, we can see it on echoes, is there. So apparently we are okay, but before we do any, any further maneuver, we can check on Floro, actually having the wire show us that we are pretty far from the circumflex artery. We don't need to give any contrast, I think. We are far. We determined on CT scan the, uh, the emphasis view. It is LAO 2216 coda in this particular case. And in this uh, particular case, we have to go LAO 32. And with the infas view, we can clearly see that we are pretty far from the circumflex artery. And it shows that we are pretty far from the circ. So the risk of uh, uh, making a, a lesion here is pretty low. OK, so we, we find, in terms of position, in this floor of view, we see the, the circumflex artery. We see the tip of the, of the anchor channel, the implant cater. And we see the uh, stabi stabilizing wire, which is medial to everything. So we're ready to implant. So the location of the first anchor is very critical, because according to this location, everything will uh, be easier or more difficult. So I will now pull up the spool so we see the tip of the cater. So I move the spool. It's interesting that uh, by maneuvering, we went a little bit too posterior. So I will go more anterior by activating the TSS. Straightening the TSS will move me more anterior. So I can go more anterior like this. Obviously, going anterior, I go also lateral. So I need to bend a little bit the, the GC by rotating clockwise. And now I am more anterior. And I'm pretty happy about the position. So we go and implant now. Eh? Let's go. So now we see PVCs. And you have seen uh, the advancement of the first anchor. So now, obviously, there is an overlap with the wire. But if we go back to the emphasis view, you see that we are far away from the, from the, from the circ. There is no reason to do any injection. So <clears throat> we're happy with this. To control the first anchor location and the penetration into tissue, I advance the spool. The spool is obviously in contact with the tissue. And now I will do the pull test. I will pull. And as you see, as I pull, the guy cater goes forward, which means we have a very good, uh, a very good implantation. I can also check it on, on echo. I can pull on the, on the tissue. So we're very happy with this implantation. There was all the details were good. So the first thing we will do, we will release the anchor. Second, I will remove the stabilizing wire. Third, I will deploy. I will deploy the implant by activating this knob. One, two, three clicks, and we get in the middle of the first uh, marker to the second marker, because in the first uh, a, a part of the implant we want to have many anchors, three anchors implanted. The second anchor has to be very close to the first. As you see here, we are, I think, in a pretty nice position. On echo as well, we are pretty close to the other one. I can, again, mobilize the spool so we see on 3D where we are. We are close to the annulus. On 2D, we see where we are. We are a little bit probably too shallow. So what I will do, I will uh, contract a bit the delivery 
to be more perpendicular, like this. Now we are more perpendicular. Being more perpendicular is, uh, is good at this time because we don't want to get into the circumflex. So we're ready for the next implant. Okay, there were no many extrasystolic beats, but uh, I think it's still good. So we do another pull test now, and they move together, obviously. And it's pretty strong. So the second anchor is also good. So before we deliver, we, we release, we just check that the leaflets are moving freely. We didn't hit the leaflet. Uh, Michel, you think uh, the leaflets are not uh, involved in the anchoring, right? So we're happy with the position. Yeah, the leaflets so are fine. Excellent. So we can now release the anchor. And I will uh, go back on uh, REO, long axis view. And in this view, I will uh, do other clicks so that I will align to the next marker. And that's my last anchor position. I cannot go more than this. So this is the most anterior portion that I can go with the delivery system. Okay, I'm happy with this. So let's go. Let's try to implant here. We have nice SSI bits. It's moving a lot. Eh? So the last anchor shows us it's very nice, the pull test. Let's see on uh, fast view how it looks. And I think this is the last anchor that we implant. Yes. So I think it's pretty nice, the position, everything. I'm happy and I will, rele I will release the anchor here. Let's release. Okay, now that the, the, the implant is completely released, the next step is to relax this curve and go towards and, and, and uh, put everything towards this pool. Readvance the old system so that the, the, the guy cater will be on this side, on the left side of the septum. So I think now we have done all the steps correctly. Now we have to uh, be ready for the next step, which is going to be the, the cinching of the implant. But before this, I would like to ask a comment from uh, Michel. What do you think, uh, Michael? Now we see uh, from, from both sides in a, in a dual volume layout that we have placed a really nice uh, an anorous band here. Without, all is, is smooth on, on, on the surface and you can see here nicely outside of the posterior mitral valve. You see it very nicely placed. Congratulations to you. Now we are removing this uh, implant delivery system we make sure that this wire is free because this wire will connect us to the implant later on. We pull him back. The wire that I have in my hands is connected to the adjusting spool. So now we remove from the tip of the cater this wire. So this is the final step of the procedure. This is a side, uh, the, the uh, the size adjustment tool basically is a cater which has a dial here that will tell us how much we are contracting the, uh, the, the implant. And here ba on the back, here is a dial, uh, sorry, it, it is a knob that we can rotate to cinch the implant. You see here the tip of this cater. It is basically a very long screwdriver, more or less. It goes into the, into the spool, which we implanted. So the wire, I will feed now the wire, and the wire is obviously connected to the spool, 
and this will bring the screwdriver cater, let's call it like this to make it simple, up to the, to the implant. The guide cater is uh, guiding us in the right position. What I will do now, I need to pull back a bit because there is too much curve here. So I will pull back so that I can get out of the guide cater. And now I, I make a curve so that I orient myself towards the, the implant. There will be minimal friction. We go on, uh, on LEO to see the same. Uh, yes, we are nicely positioned now. And now it is time to make the connection. So I will pull more. I will fix this here. We pull back the wire. And now there is uh, here a knob. I don't think you can see, but there is a locking mechanism on top that locks the sides adjustment tool to the spool. So now we are ready to contract the implant. So we start uh, contracting up to 1.5. So by rotating this uh, knob, I only see, you cannot see yourself, but I'm now zero. I will now get it to one. And I'm getting now to 1.5 now. This brought a little bit of uh, contraction. Usually at this time you see really very little ef effect on the implant itself. However, if you look at the LA pressure, it's already a little bit less as it was before. So as uh, you see, the MR is much more reduced. Uh, we have a, a pressure now 120, so which is 30% uh, higher than it was uh, before cinching. LA pressure is uh, below 20 and there is no more peak V wave. There is still some uh, posteromedial jet, which is expected in such an anatomy. As I told you before, he has a basal aneurysm, typically ischemic MR. Strange enough, uh, because the, the coronaries are normal, but still, uh, uh, maybe this patient has, uh, has had some uh, 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 specific remodeling in the basal uh, part of the annulus. So we should go now and do the final cinching. We can still uh, reduce maybe 5 10% more. So I will go, uh, Michael, why don't we do a two-chamber view, normal with color? We make the final adjustment here, and I will go to five, and I will stop there. This is five, and for me this is the final adjustment, and I will be happy with this result. I see only residual trivial MR, and I think it's a fantastic outcome in a patient like this. So as you see here now, the, the LA pressure, as the V wave is ma very minimal, and I will be happy with this outcome. So at the same time, we see smoke signs in the, in the LA and the systemic pressure is 320. So we had uh, all the signs of a very important uh, uh, hemodynamic improvement. So we're ready now to release completely the device. So to release, what we will do, we will slide so we can show here we slide this tab, this blue tab, down. And this will expose a gray tab that we start to unscrew. This will disconnect the device. Okay, now it's uh, released. And this is the final picture of the, of the uh, annual plus. You see how much the size has been reduced. Basically, it has been reduced to half it was 
in the uh, baseline. So we take this out. So the proglide is in place, it's tightened, no bleeding. And we will close the arterial axis with uh, an angio seal. So we are done. Uh, it was a uh, not so long procedure, although we've been uh, doing slowly, step by step, also for illustrating the procedure to you. Uh, you see now in the echo, we just see in the re register step of the detachment of the device from the, uh, or the delivery system from, uh, from the implant. The last image on floor looks uh, very nice. The uh, implant is really well uh, uh, stable and the annuals has been reduced a lot. Uh, as you have seen, this is a team effort. There is a strong uh, interaction between all the participants. I would like to thank you uh, uh, for, for your attention and to thank everybody in the team for their collaboration. See you soon. Bye.